Hey, welcome back to Comic Book News. I'm Dan Shaheen. I know it's been a minute, but man, have we got a show in store for you today. We've got a week uh, just jam-packed full of stuff. We're going to talk about some comics. We're going to uh, work in our new format here. We're going to talk about uh, some mini reviews of comics. We're going to talk about a graphic novel. And we're going to talk about some genuine comic book news. We're going to talk today on Batman 89. Uh, of a super hyped issue that's crashing eBay right now. New Mutants number seven, the goofiest, and I mean goofiest issue of any of the House of X stuff by far, so far. Uh, Wolverine number one, uh, I have mixed feelings on. Uh, Ginseng Roots number three, I did a review of number one and two. So um, uh, based on requests, by you, the viewers, for more uh, indie reviews, I'm, I'm I'm mixing it up every week. Finally, we're going to talk about uh, briefly about understanding comics. This is going to be my graphic novel segment, and we'll talk about what is one of the most important and interesting books in comics. It was recently reviewed on another YouTube channel, Comics Kayfabe. I highly recommend you check that out, and I'll mention that later on in the show. And last, but certainly not least. There was some genuine comic book news this week as co-publisher of DC Comics, Dan DiDio, was fired. Wow, well, let's talk about what that means for DC Comics and comics in general today on Comic Book News. Oh, hey there. Welcome to the show. Today... We've got a lot to talk about. Man, I know it's been a minute. Um, been out of town, been running around, been super busy. Wasn't able to get to my comics till just now. So, um, here I am. Today, we're going to talk about so many different things. Uh, it's it's insane. We're going to talk about uh, Batman 89. This is sort of the, like, the hot book of the week uh, due to the um, first appearance of a new character. We'll look at it in depth uh, a little bit later. New Mutants number seven. This, um, I don't know whether it was my favorite issue or not, but without a doubt it is the goofiest New Mutants issue ever. And this has been a pretty goofy series, mind you. Um, they're breaking the third wall. They're they're busting out homemade role-playing games. What? And yeah, we'll, we'll talk about this one too for sure. Uh, Wolverine number one, we'll review briefly. Uh, it's a double-sized $8 number one issue. It's basically Wolverine in this new House of X, post-House of X paradigm. And uh, it, it's split in half, so it's really two stories in one. It's not a single giant size book, which disappoints me a little bit. Um, then we'll talk about Ginseng Roots number three. Um, this series is getting stronger and stronger. This is by far my favorite issue of the three so far, and we'll talk about why. Um... But, you know, let's start off the show talking a little bit about the big comic book news that dropped. Uh, oh, yeah, we'll talk about understanding comics briefly, very briefly, and I will point you towards a much longer review on another YouTube channel. Uh, let's talk about Dan DiDio for a second. So Dan DiDio is the co-publisher of DC Comics. His, co his, his cohort, if you will, uh, is Jim Lee. Uh, DiDio, though, is not just uh, a an editor. You know, he's a writer. He writes comics, and he has written many comics. And he has a deep love for comics and pop culture and everything else. And, you know, um, while I certainly respect everything that he's done, um, and I respect uh, his work in the industry, and I don't wish anyone ill will. You know, you don't want anybody to get fired. I, I for one, thought this was a little bit overdue. And, and frankly, saw the writing on the wall. Uh, because if you looked at what's been going on in DC uh, over the past year or so, you know, at the last uh, Comic Con, basically their booth was downgraded, right? They were stuffed in with the rest of uh, like Warner Media, and they didn't get to have their own booth. And that, to me, said something. Now, recently, AT and T bought out Warner, which owns DC. And, and AT&T is hugely debt burdened. So they are looking, they, they do not have any slack to, to let anything just run and not make money, right? And not be making the optimal amount of money as they deem it. So 
the 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 corporate sites were on Didio, and you know the comics of in DC their sales have just not delivered. I I feel like they're editorially they're all over the place. They've got like three or four different events running at the same time. They've brought in some new, you know, they've got the Dark Knights metal stuff on one side, and then they've got Event Leviathan over here, and then we've got Year of the Villain happening simultaneously, all containing like the same characters that are totally overlapping, but they do not seem cohesive in any way, much less reflective of anything like that you're seeing in the media. Like right now, man, how many DC TV shows are there on the CW or whatever, like, there's a ton of people that are getting exposed to DC characters and the universe and the heroes and what have you that have never and possibly will never read a comic book. Because if they were somehow to find a comic book store or a a venue to buy comics and walked in and wanted to look at, you know, wanted to read Green Arrow because they like the Green Arrow TV series or whatever, they're going to find something that is you know, dramatically different than that. And it seems like the the corporate world wants to unify these things. Some would say that that's not a great idea. Um, You should sort of let the comics be a springboard for for new concepts and new ideas. Certainly that seemed to be what DiDio was doing. He really loved comics with a darker, grittier edge. Um, All this Dark Knight's metal stuff and, and what have you. Um... And even his own 12-issue maxi-series, Metal Men series that's out right now, that's on, like, issue number three. I, I was reading on Twitter, Evan Dorkin said, he's like, uh, um, I hope Dan D- uh, DiDio, the writer, wrote to say thank you to Dan DiDio, the publisher, for setting him up with Metal Men. Ba- because I- from what it sounds like, what I heard is that uh, Evan Dorkin and... Uh, Mike Allred had pitched a Metal Men series to DC and DiDio shot it down because, like, Metal Men were his baby and he loves Metal Men. And, oh, man, the book is rotten. I bought it to review it and I couldn't even bring myself to, to bring it up. I'm going to have to do it. I'm going to – I'll tell you what. We're going to – I'm going to ixnay on the Idio Day for the moment and we'll come back and do a video later and talk about maybe the legacy of Dan DiDio. For now, let's talk about comic books. And where do we talk about comic books? You know where. In the Million Dollar Comics Cam. Alrighty. Million Dollar Comics Cam. Today, we got all kinds of stuff to look at. So let's let's dive right in. Uh, Let's go. Let's start with uh, my least favorite. Wolverine number one. This is uh, Dawn of X. Uh, 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 another one of these X-Men, Donna X, uh, House of X, thingamabobbers, and uh, it is, okay, we've got two different stories, this is my complaint, okay, I paid $8 for a giant sized, double sized issue, whatever you want to call it, and I was hoping for a giant sized story, I was like, okay, I'll pay 8 bucks, but it's been a long time since I've had a, a comic with like you know, a really long story. And what I got instead was two separate stories. So the first story uh, was to be continued. And this is the one, I believe, with the Bogdanovic artwork. It's all written by Benjamin Percy. And it's basically, it's taken us through. It starts off, of course, in the, in the middle of some action. Wolverine wakes up and he's almost dead and he killed all his buddies on the team. Okay, and now he's worried about this. Now... Normally, this might have some impact or drama, but as we all know, and as I love to talk about, there is no death in the X-Men universe anymore for any mutants. So this page has little to no dramatic impact. Just saying. And Wolverine getting torn up and healing, that doesn't have much either because we've seen it a zillion times, right? So um, what do we get? We get a little peek at Wolverine's new life on Krakoa, where he's playing hide-and-seek with the kitties, literally. Like, that's what he's doing, and he's loving it. And they're saying, like, Wolverine, you know, it seems like you're happy here. Like, you found Krakoa is your home. You're surrounded by people you love, even if you'd never use that word. And you got a true sense of purpose in keeping them safe. Am I right? I'm right. He says, you're not wrong. Right? 
interesting. I, I think it's kind of cool to give Wolverine this 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 you know, happier moment. Like he's finally in a place where it's not the whole world against him. He's got a bunch of people surrounding him. And why, why couldn't that make him happy? All right, I'll buy it. The other thing I like here is, well, I don't like drunk Kitty Pride, and they're doing all this drinking and she's a lush. She's now able to drink by phasing her hand through alcohol. I don't know if that makes any sense at all, but I, don't know. I laughed a little bit. So anyway, this first story is all about how there is now a thriving black market in a drug uh, called pollen, which is basically a derivative of all these crazy uh, mutant drugs that, uh, that that have been created. And so that's the beginning. That's the setup for this story. And we've got this um, narcotics detective who who's been given unlimited resources to pursue this because because from the government because. They know the mutants are behind it, so they want they want to investigate mutants, right? Um, we get another secondary piece here uh, with uh, this Order of X, this group of people that they, they want to take this pollen drug and then they want to drink the blood of mutants to uh, ascend to power, blah, 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 blah. They have a religious fetish for mutants. And, uh, okay, yet another kind of layer of this stuff. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I'm definitely a fan of the art. I thought it was interesting, but I'm not a fan of the fact that we get halfway through here and then it's, uh, oh, to be continued. And then we just start a whole new story. I don't know. I don't know what I expected out of this, but that wasn't it. Now, the second story features um i think the first story is the kuberts right and this is the second story is uh mcdonovich and um it's the story of omega red making the return to krakoa right because they're welcoming everybody even the most homicidal maniac of villains and wolverine's not into that so but he's there's a mystery of of, of what happened in paris and he keeps having these tantalizing hints to wolverine wolverine keeps going back and forth to paris and krakoa doing something fighting what figuring out the oh there's vampires there there's a coven of vampires and they want they they manage to drug wolverine which i didn't think would could work but anyway they want to drink his blood okay well vampires drink blood right so that makes sense he meets up with this sort of vampire hunter chick who's got a sunlight gun and holy water bombs and stuff we've seen a million times in a million different places i don't even know if this is an existing character or just a totally new one because it doesn't really matter. Um, so we get it's a raw, a long, a long kind of drawn out, a lot of blood and fighting um, vampires, and the vampires all want to attack Wolverine. They're like, "We want your blood." He's like, "All right, take it," because he's he's like, "Oh, if they were thinking they were going to turn me into a vampire, they won't." But it turns out what they were after was his blood for another reason. They want to bring it back and bring it to dracula who i guess now is back dr strange killed dracula back in the 70s or 80s i think um but i guess they've brought him back in recent years in the marvel universe which is cool i guess and so anyway it turns out oh dracula and omega red were in cahoots the entire time um and it was all to get wolverine there uh spoiler alert to get the blood so that i guess wolverine's blood as we see in this backup piece about blood uh does not break down when exposed to ultraviolet light. Ergo, when the vampires drink it, I guess they can now uh, be, they're like daywalkers if you drink Wolverine's blood. All right. Meanwhile, Omega Red, they give him his carbonadium synthesizer so he doesn't have to be a ruthless killer anymore. I don't even know that much about Omega Red. I remember him from way back in the, the day. Not one of my favorite characters. A little too over-the-top, extreme 90s type x character but anyway they give him this thing back so now he can be just like he can be a regular person he doesn't have to be this super killer anymore but uh there's a there's a bomb built into it so that because if the mutants ever get in the way of the vampires they're gonna have omega red in their back pocket somehow that makes it but why would you tell him that because like he's gonna take this thing and the krakoa they got sciences they got forge there dude they got beast of course they could fix that right who knows? Anyway, um, next, Beyond the Pale, 
And I guess that's referring to the vampire stuff. But but wait, we had a to be continued story here and there. Is the next issue going to be double sized in two parts, or is it going to be in two parts but single sized? Confused. All right, let's go on to another confusing book. This one confused me, but in kind of a a good way, I guess. Um, in in that it is the. It, I mean, it was already kind of like a satire, a parody. It's already being. Um, narrated by Bobby DaCosta, Sunspot, right? And he's just this super arrogant, rich guy, and he's got this kooky dialogue and monologue or whatever you want to call it, and lots and lots of it, lots of caption boxes and dialogue. He's the unreliable narrator sort of recapping. He's recapping what happened last issue. But what is kind of funny is that in, in comes Moonstar's like, look, wait, no, that didn't happen last issue. Don't you remember last issue was that stupid issue in kansas that they weren't even in and like he's referring and she's referring to the fact that they're skipping every other issue they are really um you know breaking the fourth wall it's almost like she hulk level of fourth wall breaking like they know they're in a comic or some of them do certainly bobby does anyway this whole thing was a We've been set. We've been uh, when last we saw these guys in outer space, their ship was getting blown up. They were getting assassinated, and then we we're gonna have a big battle with the the new mutants and uh, the guardians, right? The um, the Shi'ar Imperial Guard. And just when we get to that, this is one of the kookiest things I've seen ever in a comic, and I thought it was great. We get to the fight, and, they, and they're like, "It's time to fight, fight, fight! It's time to fight." fight and they're like normally this fight would have gone on for 17 glorious pages women and men would have triumphed male and female aliens would have fallen maybe vice versa maybe not but now there's only one way to tell and all you need is a paradise let's get it on so this is now a game you're supposed to play with uh six-sided dice i don't know if i have a six-sided die here i do i do happen to have one right here but it doesn't have numbers on it so it won't really work um, but anyway, the idea here is that you would choose these guys and basically do like a dice war roll off to figure out who the winner is and whoever wins, you got to scream Deathbird because Sunspot's in love with Deathbird and he's been trying to win her over for the last couple of issues, right? So they get to the end of this and basically there is no fight. That was a cop out. You get to dice it out. You get to dice the fight if you want, uh, but it doesn't really happen because they reveal the truth that this was all an assassination setup, and then they're like, all right, so we'll take care of that and go home. Kind of a kind of a, a, a letdown of an ending, I guess. And then they're they're gonna go home, but you know, Cannonball was like, I'm staying here, I'm raising a kid, I'm married to Smasher, and we're raising our kid here, so I'm staying. And 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 um Sunspot's like, well, I just came here to hang out with you. I wanted to get back with you. I wanted to bring you back. I don't care about the new mutants. Even it's all about me and you. We're best friends, right? And so basically they convince Sunspot uh, to stay uh, on uh, Chandelar in, in the Shire Empire. Um, and also uh, Cyclops is able to talk them into putting a uh, Krakoan gate there too. So we get some more stuff, some more kooky comedy. I'm not going to go into it. I do like the the uh, Rod Rice artwork. We don't have any of the to be to the the uh, the next stuff or the timeline stuff anymore. Um, but I did enjoy this. It's unusual. The Rod Rice artwork is fun to look at. It's like no other book out there. Certainly like no other X book. So hey man, I'm giving this one a big thumbs up. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's go indie before we go to the big bat book. Uh, let's go Ginseng Roots number three. The first two issues were really uh, a lot about Craig Thompson himself and his brother. This one, and and then the history of ginseng farming in their hometown. This one is going all the way back to China and the sort of the legendary beginnings of ginseng and this god of the farm, this farmer god who, in their culture you know is the guy who invented the plow and the axe and irrigation and preserving so this is just a a, a history and culture lesson folklore and mythology like most comic book guys i have a a uh, 
masters in folklore and mythology. Actually, I don't. But I did have a minor emphasis in it. Um, anyway, this is, uh, as usual, talk not just about um, culture and mythology, but also about agriculture. So we're learning about crop rotation and ginseng farming as we go back and forth and learn about, you know, astrological roots of ginseng. Man, this is beautiful stuff. This is not churned out X-Men stuff. Look at the, each one of these pages. This requires um, somebody with a really, really uh, uh, delicate sensibilities, if you will, to not only write this stuff in a way that flows on the page, but to draw it as beautifully as it is. The emoting of the characters, the way he's doing this sort of um, black and white and red mixed in really makes he's able to make panel things in panels pop important things and add emphasis and depth in a way that you couldn't without it i mean you could do it in a different way but it's it's really cool looking i love the look of this book it's fun to read i recommend it it's now in diamond previews i i saw so you should be able to find this. Uh, you should be able to ask for it at your comic book store and they can order it from Diamond Comics. And if they say they can't, they probably are lying. I hate, I hate, I hate to say that. But it happens, right? Um, so, um, that's sad. I don't want to end there. So I won't. We'll go into Batman. Okay, this is the hot book on eBay right now, right? This book, um, it's funny because I reviewed my last Batman, uh, the last Batman issue, and I said, that's it. I'm removing Batman uh, from my pull list. And and uh, longtime watcher JK, who I saw this weekend uh, at Hijinx Comics in San Jose, who was like, oh, Dan, you got to get this one uh, because this is the first appearance of a new character, right? And so I guess that lit up the boards and... And it wasn't really well known that this was the tr a first appearance of, um, spoiler alert, Joker's new girlfriend. Uh, and I guess her name is Punchline. So here we've got a lot of stuff with Harley Quinn in this issue. I have not been enjoying this Batman story by Tinian. This issue is not much of an exception. I don't like Harley Quinn as a character. And I don't like her interactions in here with... with um, Catwoman and, and the assassins and whatnot, but all right, whatever. And they were trying to bring in these new villains that he's created, the Gunsmith and Mr. Teeth or whatever this guy is. Pretty lame. Um, supposedly, too, I was at um, my shop, the Scruffy Nerf Herder, Nerd Herder, rather, in, in Eureka today, and he said that supposedly on this page, there's, a, there's some versions floating out there where this dialogue did not get printed it's a misprint and that's supposedly the super ultra rare one i don't know if that's true or not but who cares and, and speaking of who cares let's just cut right to it i mean because who cares about this story it's really stupid um but i got the issue because it was saved for me because i'm a regular subscriber and even though i had canceled the book i called him at the last minute at, at scruffy and i said hey man can you still get me that book and he's like yeah i'll hold it for you dan and he did and here it is it's all for this this one panel this is it's really you can't call this a first appearance it's sort of like wolverine's first appearance is in hulk 181 but really in hulk 180 he's like teased in one panel or something that's what this really is. But nobody knew this was coming, I guess. They were expecting her to be in the next issue. This is the true first appearance. So this is going for, somebody said, 40 50 bucks on eBay. Comic shops are in a tizzy and holding them back to make sure speculators weren't coming in to flip them. Make sure that they get them to their regular customers as they should. So kudos to those stores that did that. Um, wow, that was a, a, a week of comics. Um... That was that was pretty awesome, right? It was uh, oh, oh, there was a not many comics, but a nice wide sampling of the type of stuff I like to read. Speaking of which, um, let's talk about let's go into my new segment where we're going to talk about graphic novels. So I'm not going to belabor this because 
as I said before, there's a there's a review that just came up from the guys at Comics Kayfabe, where they talk in depth. They go for like two hours, I think, talking about this book. This is I, I've been meaning to review it for a long time. I've been uh, meaning to review more graphic novels for a very long time, and I've just always sort of hesitated because so you have to put so much research and work into each one for me to review them the way I've been you know, page by page reviewing, then I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to bring in some of my favorite all-time graphic novels. I'm going to talk about them briefly in the Million Dollar Comics cam, and then we're going to move on with our lives, okay? Um, so anyway, Understanding Comics by Scott McCobb. This is a first printing um, by Tundra. This was later published by Kitchen Sink and many other publishers now. To this, to this very day, there's brand new printings, and I recommend um, you seek this out. Um... It's basically a book written in as it is a comic. It's a graphic novel. It's written in the art form of comics, but it's a scholarly exploration of the medium of comics. Okay, and we get into such important things as you know panel transitions and uh, realistic figures versus abstract figures. Um, this is breaks down comics in a way that really turned me on and, and and opened me up to what comics were and could be. This is the book that finally made me truly understand how I could love, you know, comic books and comic strips and single page, car single panel cartoons and all the stuff that I loved. They were all just comics, man. Although he does quibble about single panel car uh, comics actually not being comics. Anyway. Anytime you try to define things, there's going to be arguments. And there's certainly stuff you could argue about in here. But he did stuff and he referenced the type of comics that showed me he had great taste and broad taste in comics. Right here, a little Peter Bag next to Art Spiegelman, a little Chester Brown up in there, and Dan Klaus and Hernandez Brothers and Mary Fleener. And who am I missing? Whoever else. Grew the Wanderer. You know, the references are crumb. Mickey Rat, like all the references show that he looked at underground stuff and independent stuff and all kinds of comics when thinking about this. Um, now, Scott McCloud did a book called Zot in the 80s, which is sort of a, a very fun, somewhat manga influenced, superhero ish, alternate reality type comic that's really good and worth reading, tracking down if you can. But man, if you read nothing else by him, you must find Understanding Comics. Granted, this is not for everyone. This is not for you if you're looking for, a, certainly not for superheroes, but if you're even looking for a narrative tale, that's not what this is. This expo this does in comics something that's almost never been done. The closest thing to this before was Will Eisner's um, sequential art and illustrations, I think it was called, a book about the medium of comics. And he was a pioneer in so many ways, first graphic novels and books about comics, but... Um, that book, while we might talk about that on the show someday, as a precursor to this, understanding comics took it to the next level and really explored comics in so many different aspects of comics um, so in so many different ways. And by doing it in the form of comics, uh, you know, it just drives home the impact that one that comics can do anything, but uses their unique abilities um uh, to great effect in, 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 in teaching you about the medium of comics. Speaking of which, a medium and a genre, right? Those are things that some people don't even know the difference. For. Like some people say like a comic book movie and what they really mean is a superhero movie. They're confusing the, 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 the medium of comics, which can be comics about anything, with the superhero genre. I hate when people do that. That's one thing that's great about Japanese comics is they didn't have all the same... Uh, preconceptions and so there's Japanese comics about all different topics sports and business and politics and anything you can think of um, and there are in English comics too just not as many well I wanted to point out one of my favorite parts is the chapter about color right and when he gets into color how else could you do it but by turning the book to color and the fact that the rest of it is in black and white and that it suddenly changes to color really lends huge impact to his arguments about the difference between black and white and color comics and different types of coloring. You know, talking about the difference between like flat coloring and, and, and European coloring and uh, all different kinds of coloring and the effect that they could have um, 
on the medium. Amazing stuff, right? I, I'm not going to go page by page. Again, I'm going to put up a link. Go check out that Comics Kayfabe uh, uh, video about understanding comics. They'll go into it in, in, in greater detail. Not with a first printing from Tundra, mind you, like this one, but, you know, they do their best. Uh, so, anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thank this is a long video um, about a lot of different stuff, and that's kind of the way it's going to go from here on out. Do you like that? Do you hate that? Let me know in the comics, comments below because, you know, that's the thing that I love the most about this channel and my experience on YouTube is the comments and interacting with you people out there who love comics. I don't really know anybody who's into comics in my neck of the woods or certainly not that many. So you guys are all I got. So uh, keep up the chatter. Keep the comments going. Tell me if you like this format. You don't like it. Hit a thumbs down, man. I'm, that's okay with me. But give me some feedback if you do. I've got a couple thumbs down occasionally. If you do put a thumbs down, how about let me know why, huh? I'd love to know. And, you know, I'm open to feedback. So, anyway, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing, clicking like and whatever, clicking that bell for notifications. And, and most of all, just thank you for watching and giving me a place to talk about comics. I'll see you next time.